Hello and welcome to another video. So today we are taking a look at an agroforest deck for rotation. This deck is done fairly well for me so far. It's definitely not a bad deck. I have teched in Devil Flower as a counter to Tanko Shrine along with many other things that are kind of annoying now with amulets being super popular but mostly Tanko Shrine. It deals with it pretty much instantly and allows you to get around it pretty well. Especially since you can develop a board very quickly because all you need is a couple of fairies and a devil flower and you've got a pretty much full board at that point with a few other things already on board. So definitely a decent one to go with but overall nothing really changed much when it came to aggro forest. It's still pretty much the same. I am running one aria guiding fairy which fits well with devil flower and just gives me that little bit extra that I would probably need to deal with things so it's definitely nice to have otherwise we're topping out at Emperor you could also use the new legendary that's also I've seen pretty popular in aggro forest unfortunately I only have one copy of it and I didn't really want to just run one otherwise when Tenko dies down or if you don't need to combat Tenko you can easily run that over devil flower very very easily so we'll get right into this and check it out so our first matchup here is against Rune, and of course with Rune you do have to be a little careful. Rune can very easily defeat you in the late game, of course an aggro deck does pretty well because it deals with them very very early, so this deck in particular does very well in that regard, being able to deal with early things. I did end up keeping Devil Flower, probably not the right move against Rune, I held it just in case we came up against Dirt Rune and I wanted to counter a Sigil or something, really that was the only reason I tried to hold it there, as there are a few Rune things that could be a problem. But nothing too major happened and we can get Feeder out. I could have went with the Furious Elder Weedman, but Feeder with the buff gets us a draw, so I would much rather play that. Plus, in this case, Magic Missile would have absolutely wrecked me. So, definitely the better way to go. So we can pretty easily go wide with this board, and this video will be rather short due to the fact that these games do go very quickly, and I didn't want to jam-pack a heap of games into this video, so I do only have a couple for you guys. As Forest isn't one of my favourite classes, so it's definitely something very straightforward and simple, and not much has changed prior to the old Agro Forest decks. So, if you want to check out some more Agro Forest, you can check out some of my old Dawnbreaker Night Edge videos. They're all very similar to how this deck will function. So, Magic Missile dealt with that pretty well, of course, so we've got a nice board, but that's about it. Devil Flower did at least get the play. And it soaked up a bit of damage there, so why not? Of course, Emperor's play is going to be pretty much perfect. I do decide to Evo the Fairy, as the 1-3 will only become a 2-4, I think it is. Which isn't quite as good, even though it does give Skyrider Bane. It's definitely not worth it when I'm going for damage over anything else right now. So we're going to turn 6 pretty solid, as long as they don't clear this Emperor or set up a ward, which doesn't look like they're going to, we will win this match. As I said, these games are very quick, but I did want this video to be on the shorter side to begin with, so hopefully you guys can enjoy this bite-sized video for today. Can't help but experiment a little bit with videos and see what works for everyone. So very nice 9 damage, pretty easy. The next matchup is against Haven. While there is a lot of hate going on around Haven, it's still one of my favourite decks and probably always will be regardless of whether it is meta or not. It hasn't had a meta time for a long while and it's about time it really had its tier 1 spot. It was one of the few decks that hasn't been in tier 1 for a very long time. I mean, Summit had, I guess you could say, a shining moment but it was definitely overshadowed by other decks. And very quickly disappeared which was unfortunate. So we don't start off with much. Fairy Whispers is pretty decent turn 2 play. Gets us our fairies, which will definitely help out Devil Flower and such as we go forward. Their Mori, not really a problem against this deck. Everything is low cost and usually gets immediate value outside of fairies, so... And even having a fairy kill soaks up the effect, so I don't mind that at all. There is a Happy Pig. A little bit of an annoying card, not one I wanted to have to deal with, but... Definitely something I will. So we do have double Wood of Brambles anyway, so we don't really need to hold this Airbound Barrage, which means we can use it to kill this Happy Pig, negate as much of their heal as possible, and limit what they can do with Tenko next turn, which is what I would expect coming out of a turn 4. You should always be expecting Tenko to be the play, even if it's not. Fortunately it was. Unfortunately I didn't plan out perfectly, so that did mean that I couldn't use Devil immediately. I will have to wait till probably next turn, 
to abuse it, but this turn does just let us develop our board nicely and go face, so it's not too big a loss. It does just mean they're probably going to get a better value out of their next turn than what they could have. So Princess Snow White plus a White Fang Temple with an Evo that does let them clear one follower here maximum, or oh sorry, minimum. Maximum they could clear two if they decided to kill off one of these three threes on their own, which in this case will be the Unevolved. Looks like that's what they went for, so they're going to probably go for the double clear, which they got. One in three chance, definitely odds in their favour there. But we have got four damage on board minimum. And we can also play our Devil Flower now, along with getting our Storm damage out early. Which, with a nice Evo, will be eight damage. So we're only going to be two damage short next turn if we include Stoned... Uh, sorry, Storied Falcon. And there is the White Fang Temple still on board, plus the couple of Holy Priests. Definitely okay, I mean, they're going to heal a little bit. Or maybe not, they went for Iron Fist. I was definitely expecting a heal there, that's the usual line of play, but I guess with the single heal there, they weren't too concerned. Of course, Sylvia Justice gets the nice little bit of a pick off, and we can go for Falconeer, which grants us a Falcon, which we'll hold on to for next turn. To go for the Brambles play, because it makes things more sticky and harder to deal with. And Gem Princess, so we should be able to win this, it's just going to come up with a small strategy to deal with this as effectively as I can. And still get lethal, because they are going to heal two, which means we're going to be just short with Skystride Raptor, unless we can somehow mitigate that damage, which it looks like we should be able to. If we use these couple of fairies, plus the Sky Sky Raptor, then the Insect Lord, make sure we get the ordering just right. We could also have buffed up the Insect Lord, I guess, but either way it would have been fine. This way, though, guarantees our lethal very, very comfortably. With four damage, two face, killing off Tenko Haven. That tends to be how my Tenko matches have gone with this deck so far. So while Tenko Haven heals can be a little annoying, they're definitely not the end of the world against this deck. Devil Flower does a great job at picking it off and developing your board, which is what you want. Overall, this deck I would say is doing reasonably well for what it is. I mean, we're running four legendaries in this variant of deck. Of course, there are a few different variants, and you can swap and change a few things like Aria, Moon, swap in a couple of the new legendaries, swap out Devil Flowers for the new legendaries, mix it up. But overall, that's still reasonably cheap. Four legendaries, of which one of one, everyone should have at least one of Moon and Sun, amazing card. Insect Lord, reasonably good as well, most people would have that. And Aria Guiding Fairy, if you ever play Unlimited, you've got to have that card. So, if not, if you're a beginner and want to play Forest, this deck could still be for you. I mean, you can swap out Insect Lord for nearly anything else that you want to put in this deck that's low cost and will fit your curve nicely. Insect Lord is just better as a re standard removal, so definitely the one I would run. Otherwise, Aria and Moon and Sun, both again, are pretty easily swappable. You can fit in pretty much anything that will go in your early game and work, so hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. Hit the like button and subscribe. You'll find the deck list in the description below, and I'll catch you guys next time. See ya.